Gary and Salka and the medial surface. The most important landmark or feature what you have to understand on the medial surface is the corpus callosum. This is the anterior part and this is the posterior part. You can see here, this is the rostrum, genu, this entire thing is the body and this is the splenium of the corpus callosum. And here you can see this will be the paraterminal gyrus and these two are the paralfactory gyri, anterior and posterior paralfactory gyri separated by the paralfactory sulcus. And here you can see just above the corpus callosum this will be the callosal sulcus, this is the cingulate gyrus and this is the cingulate sulcus, this will be the cingulate sulcus. This entire thing is the median frontal gyrus, this entire thing is the median frontal gyrus. And here you can see this is the calcarine sulcus which will be divided into anterior half and posterior half by this parieto occipital sulcus. So this is the anterior part of the calcarine sulcus, this is the posterior part of the calcarine sulcus, this is the parieto occipital sulcus. So this is the cuneus, this is the precuneus and this is the paracentral lobule which surrounds the origin of the central sulcus, this is the paracentral lobule. So as you see here, medial frontal gyrus, paracentral lobule which is the highest center for maturation and defecation, precuneus, cuneus separated by parieto occipital sulcus and this is the calcarine sulcus, anterior part and posterior part. So this posterior part of the calcarine sulcus is the area around which the visual cortex will develop. So just on the walls and floor will be area number 17, primary visual area and surrounding that area and 18 and 19, secondary visual areas. So this is the lingual gyrus, below the calcarine sulcus this will be the lingual gyrus, this is the parahippocampal gyrus, parahippocampal gyrus. Connection between cingulate gyrus and parahippocampal gyrus we call the small portion just near to the splenium as the isthmus. And here you can see this is the septum pellucidum and this cavity is the lateral ventricle. If I put forceps like this, so this will be the anterior horn. If I put forceps from here and go behind into the occipital lobe, this will be the posterior horn. And if I put a forceps down here, this will be the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. And here this is the thalamus and this thalamus and below that will be the hypothalamus. Both of them separated from the opposite side by the third ventricle, third ventricle. So lateral ventricle anterior horn, then posterior horn, then inferior horn and here will be the third ventricle and as you see in this specimen you can see here this is the midbrain and this is the cavity of the midbrain. So that is the cerebral aqueduct and this is the fourth ventricle. So lateral ventricle, third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct and fourth ventricle. This is the septum pellucidum. Septum pellucidum. It separates the two halves of the uh, lateral ventricle in the midline. And here you can see this is the fornix. This is the fornix. This is the fornix. This is again one more specimen where you can see. So this part will be the location of the pineal gland, this will be the hebendular commissure, this will be the posterior commissure, this will be the, this here will be the anterior, somewhere here will be the anterior commissure and this will be the interthalamic adhesion. This will be the thalamus and this will be the hypothalamus, hypothalamus and thalamus. This is the thalamus, interthalamic addition, hypothalamic sulcus, thalamus and hypothalamus. So here will be the anterior commissure, here will be the posterior commissure, hebendular commissure and this will be the location of the pineal gland. Here you can see these are the mammillary bodies. This is the infundibulum and lower part will be the tuber cinereum. Same thing you can see here. So this was the infundibulum with tuber cinereum, and here you can see two mammillary bodies.